Hi, my name is Gregory Mark. This case was posted by one of the Calic um, on the Facebook and asking for our help. That's uh, when he replaced the crowns from 7 and 10 with inflamed gingiva. He still has the problem with occlusion and still had the problem with the gingiva reaction uh, to the new crowns. So I don't have the whole data about this case, but I was asked to, you know, for our help what's the reason, possible reasons, for this failing. So I'm going to try to approach this case from a different perspectives. It could be occlusion, periodontion, and then biological weight, and also from the surgical part, what was done on this patient. We see that uh, the, the question had to be asked, it, uh, when the patient had the crowns 7 to 10, the diastema between 8 and 9 was it done um, was it developed after the insertion or was it probably original it's a, uh, it was maybe original diastema when patient even get, got the crowns the question had to be answered because that's very important for us if the patient didn't have diastema during the insertion and developed the diastema after all Maybe the bite is not stable. I mean, something is active on, going on, and we have to address before we change those crowns for the new ones. We also can see on this patient that the patient doesn't have a posterior support. Maybe the patient has um, a dative response that's uh, to move the lower jaw towards the for uh, forward, just to. Uh, to chew properly or functional properly. We also probably have to figure out that so what's going on under the crowns, why the ginger is inflamed, okay, is it biological with violation, maybe it's allergic reactions to restorative materials, but um, the only way to probably to find out is, is when we um, see uh, the preparation when we remove the crowns. So let's uh, probably go um, step by step. If, for example, we decided that there is a biological weight violation and we would like to do the surgery, um, if we do crown lensing procedure on this patient, we have to see that the crown lensing procedure is going to help this patient um, to achieve the aesthetic result. Can we improve the preparation so when the future crowns or restorations gonna come up okay come in that so uh, we won't have the same reaction if we look at the f uh, on uh, this picture you can see that uh, the bone level around those crowns are very thick so when we do crown lensing procedure we have to make sure it's so we are um, properly reflect the flap and also we have to have uh, access for biological shaping of the uh, extra bone or additional bone the patient has and we have to do crown lensing procedure so it will probably um, bring us to better biological weight, uh, biological weight. Since we had no idea what the prep looks like under the crowns, the only way to find out is when we remove the crowns. Second, we have to find out it's about the occlusal problem. Maybe the patient has a constricted bite, and we have to address it before we um, finalize um, our restorative part. So, if it's uh, if it's constricted bite, how much is constricted? how much the lower jaw wants to move forward. Maybe it's adaptive process on the lower jaw move forward uh, because there's no uh, posterior support or maybe there's a breathing problem. We we'll also have to see that uh, uh, that's the bite is a little bit deep and maybe the lower jaw doesn't have enough freedom, okay, you can say constricted. So as we know that uh, if periodontium is strong and the joint is strong we usually can see if it's constricted bite uh, chipping the porcelain or chi uh, chipping the teeth or, or cracking the teeth 
So in this case, we can see the estimate if it developed after the insertion of the crowns. The reductionism is, is not strong enough. Okay, and the restoration have a primary occlusal trauma. That's what the, uh, the doctor been complaining, that after the insertion of those final restorations, he still has occlusal trauma on the front is a tremor. Um, and um, after several adjustments, he still see that um, the heavy contacts on, on TVT. So this is uh, just uh, um, the initial picture. If we look at the different picture when the patient uh, open up, you can see this. There's no posterior support. The dentist placed um, the implants, placed another implant, and he's trying to upright the second uh, molar. But we also can see the wear on, on the lower antivities. And once again, we have to find out is it something that was active still, or is it probably was probably in the past and it doesn't exist anymore. That's why in this particular case, uh, I usually deprogram the patient and I want to see what the initial contact is. The dentist has been trying to use, you'll see in the later pictures, that he was trying to use a lift gauge in this type of cases. And if it's constricted bite, usually lift gauge is there is no help, and it's make probably this case maybe worse, uh, just to achieve the CR position. So what he did, he removed the restorations. And you can see he fabricated uh, temporary crowns, and he uh, did a. Um, crown lensing procedures of from 7 to 10. If I look closely, that's again, as I mentioned before, that's, that's the bone level, okay, is very thick. And type of the flap the doctor did, it doesn't reflect the full thickness in that particular the bone, okay? So the flap has supposed to be a little bit more lower and a little bit more wider so you can have better sec uh, access uh, to the bone level from 7 to 10. And um, there has to be um, maybe a fistonic level here and, and again biologically shaping around uh, from 7 to 10. If we leave it as easy as you can see on this um, uh, picture, you can see how thick the facial bone, especially between 8 and 9. And somebody that's uh, just um, advised to do vertical prep or BOPT uh, prep uh, uh, to avoid a biological weight violation. The problem is that um, if you're leaving the same type of the bone, uh, the thickness of the bone, and you start prepping the teeth at this type of the bone again, you will create a pocket, a bone pocket where the inflammation going to be occurring. So the bone has to be uh, thinned, festooned probably on from 7 to 10 to give more, um, I would say, biological shape, proper biological shaping. So the, uh, the gums will probably respond much, much, much better to reaction. And as it, that's important things, you can see that um, when well, um, crown lensing was done, it, the bone was not removed as much from the lining angle to lining angle. And that's why you can see that on the final restorations, that's, that's why the patient has more redness or biological width violation, especially in this area. We also can see that biological, uh, that uh, the, uh, crown lensing procedure we've done, but the scallop shape of this bone is not the right one. So the usual scalp is like a 3.5 millimeter, 4.5 millimeters from the facial to the intracrestal bone. And it's here we can see it's like a flat. And what it creates, it's like a high crest position on this particular case. And that's why any subgingival position, again, of the crowns, the restorations, is going to be a higher risk of biological width violation. So once again, the crowns also been a little bit longer than compared to the uh, to the uh, the previous ones. So once again, it's um, the flap is not right. 
has to be more wider okay the bone shaping is not right that crown lensing shape is not right okay and also that the cut for reflection of the flap it was not also right it has to be more perpendicular to the flap so you can see uh, more um, the lingual flap with the papilla uh, not touched so let's go for the pictures you can see that uh, the suture has been placed again as I don't know it's what type of the sutures he placed but this type of sutures probably you have to be placed on posterior teeth not on anterior teeth okay and that's why it's going to take a little bit longer much more longer okay the papilla to mature and that's why if the, uh, the doctor waited a little bit let's say not enough time and prep those teeth for final restoration there's a higher risk of biological width violation you can see as I mentioned before that the shape of the bone is not right you can see how the tissue is still rolling over the margin of the bone and will create again disharmony and possible again uh, biological width violation because it creates with the bone a pocket So you can see that um, the prep was done, uh, the shade matching, but, but you can see the tissue is still not healed properly. Okay, you can see the papilla is not healed. So, and that's why um, I would probably, if I would be, uh, if I would, again, I'd be a doctor, so I'll probably wait until my final prep because, again, we have to make sure that so we have well, the sulcus depth right we have enough depth to the bone of a measurement so the bone would be probably at the best uh, reference point not the soft tissue and so make sure that the soft tissue is mature before we start final preparation and you can see that uh, the margin of the crowns are below this gum level and again since the tissue is not mature yet again it gives a higher risk of uh, biological leads violation you can see the crown has been delivered okay the tissue again didn't mature yet in the proximal bone and then this is the final x-ray and you can see when the tissue start filling the space you see the reaction okay um, on the papilla crowns but most important th that uh, the doctor been complaining that um, has a tremor between uh, probably 7 and 10 and he, he was trying to adjust the bite and still has again um, the bite issue on this front teeth so I would probably suggest in this type of case you can see that's a posterior open bite that the patient has tendency to move the jaw forward and uh, I would probably deprogram this patient to find the real CR position and before I do something else about this patient I would probably find it's a uh, what's the primary source of the occlusal problem before I would change these crowns again okay that's what my advice is to the doctor you can see he's been using the lift gauge and also the jig and see that the jig was uh, not properly designed there's a little bit angle probably it was not stable second it's not in the middle line okay you can see that the lower anterior teeth are not even I would probably do maybe like an Essex tray with a point sticking out and be more in the middle and can get proper again CR position and recording and uh, you can see that interocclusal distance is too big that's a your um, occlusal interocclusal distance of posterior teeth should be 1.5 uh, 2 millimeters and it's more than here that's why that that this jig has to be more filed and more perpendicular to the front teeth and should be right in the middle with a small point of occlusion and repeatable point you can see again it's uh, the occlusal recording being taken the lip gauge again it's not the best tool especially on a patient constricted bite so this is not a problem I would use in this type of particular case because it's going to make more 
byte constricted and we have more problems okay you can see when they have a deep byte the leaf gauge gives us a more steeper angle and it's not going to be the best tool to deprogram the muscles and find the CR position if the CR, CR itself more distal than uh, actual CR so probably that's the doctor been trying to remove the uh, the new restoration and probably solve the problem so I hope this demonstrations uh, or presentation will help uh, some of the doctors if you have any questions please uh, uh, send me email markgregorydds at yahoo.com thank you